Tune into this week's Xamarin Show. We're having a good friend David on showing Xamarin Forms 5.0. So tune in. Welcome back, everyone, to the Xamarin Show. I'm your host, James Montemagno. And today, my favorite person in the entire world, David Ortnow, is with us. How's it going, David? I'm good, James. How are you, my friend? I'm absolutely fantastic. And I do not want to delay because your camera may puts out for the 18th time today. I know. it's a, Well, things have been too hot here in, in the Midwest. Things are cooling off, though, so we're happy about that. That's right. Winter is coming. And also, people don't have to wait because something is already here. Xamarin Forms 5.0. Oh, my goodness. And even we have a link for them, aka.ms slash XF5. Look at that. You can go right there. And David, I believe they're here to tell us all about that. Is that correct? I am here. Yeah, I've got a couple of slides that I can walk you through to kind of give you the uh, context for what we've been working on. And I've got a little code demo. So let's go ahead and go over to the slides. Awesome. I'm ready. And Boom. Yeah. So so this is last year in Xamarin Forms. And I, I like these kinds of slides because I can just keep adding things to them. Um, but this is a lot of stuff that's been coming out over the course of the 4.0 you know, zero, one, two, three, all the way up through eight. Mm. Um, there won't be a 4.9. Uh, it was a missed opportunity right there, right? I mean, we could have gone 4.9, then boom, five. But um, we've been we've been baking on five for a while. And here's the thing is that with this, go to the next slide. There we go. All of these bits of those features have been marked experimental. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are things that we wanted to get into people's hands because they were valuable enough that you know those who were more adventurous, the early adopters could start using them. But you know, there's more work to be done. We wanted to really engage the feedback and, and keep iterating on them. Yeah, in um, fact, so if, if people have watched the previous What's New and Xamarin Forms whatever version with you, you've talked about many of these features and demo these features. But you're right. You've always had to go in and hit that little little flag and say, I want to use media element or swipe view or whatever. And I, I use a lot of these features in production. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Them, right? so. yeah, yeah. I, I, as a matter of fact, a uh, tweet today, I, I saw people saying, oh, I've been using these in production. <laughs> um, so the, the thing with 5.0 is that we're really going for stability here. So uh, it's been a little bit longer between releases from 4.8 to 5.0. But that's because we're working on the stability of those things. So just a quick mm -hmm. recap of what these things are. Many of you are already aware of them, but we have brushes. These are for linear and solid brushes, uh, linear gradient, sorry. Um, and so as you can see here in the screen, you got some nice uh, subtle gradients going on. And I actually have that in a demo uh, in just a moment. Carousel view, who doesn't need a carousel view at one time or another in, in some app or some screen? Good for onboarding, good for uh, headers and things like that. Um, and then we've got drag and drop. This was kind of something that we added specifically because the duo, uh, the Surface Duo with the dual screens um, had a really good opportunity to, to utilize this gesture. Um, so I built this little demo here and I'm gonna see if I can't build this out to recreate an old uh, audio sampler that I built way back in the day. Um, cool. So yeah, cool stuff. Um, and then radio button, which, you know, in and of itself is perhaps not the most exciting uh, control. But James, you're familiar with the old checkbox, right? You had a little hand in that. I did. A good old checkbox. Everyone needs it. I I, I I was so excited when it came out. I was like, everyone needs a checkbox. And I use it. I use it in all my apps. It's the first control that I use. I go in, checkbox. Yeah. And I just have it there because why not? Exactly. Well, and and the so the interesting thing about checkbox is when we added it, it was one of the first controls that we essentially polyfilled a platform that didn't have a checkbox. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that's iOS, and so we draw that check for the checkbox. Um, so radio button is kind of another milestone in the evolution of Xamarin Forms, where originally it was all native platform, kind of a lowest common denominator. Mm -hmm. Now we're saying, you know what? We care more about what customers need to do. And so with this, we have taken the radio button that was a contribution and we've enhanced it to take control templates. Oh, so cool. what a control template does, uh, Windows developers are very familiar with this, maybe Silverlight as well. Um, you can essentially provide the template for whatever content you want. The, the key is, is that as soon as you've gone into control template land, you're no longer using the native control itself, but you're using all the cross-platform functionality. Mm -hmm. So you could make this thing Skia Sharp to have all drawn UI, uh, or as you can see in this case, that bottom uh, screen there, um, I'm using the Fluent UI 
uh, sample from the web sample, actually. And I'm creating that day, week, month, kind of that bigger uh, radio. So oh, cool. you have full control of the UI. And this is something that uh, we'll be seeing more and more controls taking advantage of. So that's something I'm familiar with because I'm so used to like WPF or UWP, like the button, the button has, and Xamarin forms we have, we have text, right? And it's pretty obvious that's what it does. And often in a button, you literally put text and, and normally that's what I do, but in WPF or, or UWP, it's, it's content. And yes. so now I kind of get like the content could be any, so you could put an image in there or whatever you want, but the base functionality under the hood, I'm assuming is still a button or a radio button in that yeah. kind of sense. Yep. Exactly. It, it is. Is it all? It's all still that. And the thing with uh, controls in Xamarin Forms today is you can always compose your own button. Mm -hmm. uh, you could put the button to the background and add whatever other content you need around it. It's more of a comp. You, you compose it that way. It's gotcha. a composite control. Um, whereas the control template kind of bakes that into the control itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's a pattern that is easier to follow, I think. You don't have to think to yourself, oh, I now need to go create a new class, call it my button, and do all that jazz, as opposed to with the radio button, you can just bake it right into it. So Very cool. So I'm really excited about that. Um, Shapes and Paths has been a huge hit. Um, this is uh, the sort of thing that you would have only used Skia Sharp for. Um, and then you kind of have to pay a little bit of like a five megabyte price or cost on your app size sometimes because it brings along quite a bit of heft, but it's super powerful and very performant. Well, now we have shapes and paths to uh, allow you to use the, the native platform graphics APIs, mm. but in a very simple declarative way like this. And so this is based on the WPF and UWP syntax. Uh, you can see I've got a path uh, described down at the bottom there. I have lines and ellipses. Uh, up at the top. And in the sample, I'll show you here in just a minute from my, my demo, we can also clip other controls, which is really, really cool. Uh, yeah, that thing's my favorite just because now if you have ever done anything in Skia Sharp, you know, there's a lot of custom controls that people can make or evolve or do whatever. And now you can just do it directly in there. So I'm really hoping to see like this whole new generation of Xamarin controls, which I'm sure you'll talk about too, but it's like really cool to see this thing, you know, just come right in the box. Exactly. More more power in the developer's hands to really create and achieve whatever UI you need. Uh, so one of those common uh, UX patterns that you might see is this swipe. Um, and so this is something that was baked into the list view previously, and that was part of the native platform. This control, you can actually wrap anything. So whether it's a layout or another button, or, or you can use it inside of a collection view or a list. And essentially, you can uh, template whatever you want to appear behind it. So mm -hmm. very useful, as you saw there in the uh, shopping cart for you know deleting or removing something from the shopping cart. But you can put complex layout in there as well, and you could have multiple buttons and interactions. You could basically hide a whole UI of things behind it. Similar, I think, to what you might have done in some of the Twitter apps in the early days. I seem to remember being able to swipe a direction and reveal like the retweet and the, yep. the favorite and things like that. I use this in one of my apps, actually, my Animal Crossing app, and I, I, you swipe left and right on it and you get little icons, you get, you know, you can see your friend's switch code, you can remove them, you can favorite them, and, and, and actually have like material, like, you know, frames and a whole bunch of things inside of there, which is kind of cool. So you can really customize it more than just here's a button, you know? Yeah, exactly. Super, super powerful and flexible. Really everything that we're doing is, is going the way of, uh, how do we template this? Right. Yeah. And, and are all the styles available to you? Yeah. So, so I covered a lot of the things here that, you know, we said were experimental, but there are a few things that I have not mentioned. Um, and these are things like the C sharp UI extensions, the expander, the media element, these are going to migrate from Xamarin Forms to the Xamarin Community Toolkit. And so I wanna take a moment to highlight that toolkit because it's very active right now. Mm. Hacktoberfest is coming up or is currently happening. And uh, we wanna make sure that everybody knows it's there and it's a great place to go drop those controls that are commonly used. Now, the reason that we're moving these here, James, is because um, as Xamarin Forms 5 goes into stable release, these controls have more growth potential gotcha. and things that we want to see uh, evolve and iterate on. And the community toolkit is the best place for that while 5.0 goes into its uh, lengthy stable release. Gotcha. So 
of all the stuff in the community toolkit and and you know you were instrumental in the early days of this in previous iterations and now yeah. Steven Thavison and Gerald Versluis and uh um, I'm going to miss names. Uh, Javier is involved uh, from the forums team and many other contributors have been actively uh, reviewing PRs and engaging over there. And so we now have a ton of stuff. Some of this stuff was migrated over from the, st the work you did originally. And then some of this is, uh, is all new stuff. Like you can see the camera view is in. Um, the expander is already there. The media element is on the way. Uh, C Sharp UI is on the way. Um, but there's lots of tons of converters, tons of behaviors, mm -hmm. uh, helpful extensions. Like if you're embedding images and you want to be able to refer to that image and you don't care about multiple DPIs, for example, uh, you can use that image resource extension, but so many really, really cool things over there. Yeah. Super cool. I love, I love, we were talking about it today in our team's channel. I'm like, this thing is going to be like the one-stop shop for all the extra stuff that you want in your app, you know? So what are the sort of the Xamarin essentials of UI in a way? Of this yeah, and I've noticed it's in the box already. You can do it, but what if it's just us there? Right. And I've noticed that some of the things that I think were in your MVVM helpers have started to make their way over. I said, uh, take, take it all. I said, take it all. Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, it puts it in the Xamarin org, as you can see the GitHub here. And yeah. so there's there's a level of maintenance and support that you can you can rely upon that it's part of a Microsoft repository and it's not you sure. know in a personal repository. That's true. Yeah. I mean, I only have so much time, so it's like, you know, it's better to get it in here and then, <laughs> and then it's going to be supported uh, forever. Exactly. Um, I do have a couple of slides to highlight uh, some of those big ones that I mentioned, the C Sharp UI. Um, you know, we certainly know that a lot of developers love XAML and are super productive with it. And we, of course, deliver XAML hot reload to make people super productive with that. Um, but hey, C Sharp is really, really powerful. And mm -hmm. with these extensions from Vincent Hugendorn, uh, you can create some really nice fluent styled UI all directly in C Sharp. And then you can use a, a product like Live Sharp to get your, your hot reload for that. Cool. Um, so yeah, we know that people love to do that. The expander, as I mentioned, is a really cool control from Andre Misyukovich. Uh, this is a sample that Javier put together. It's up on his GitHub. And then a uh, the couple other controls I did want to mention real quick that we are going to be bringing to the Xamarin Community Toolkit. They were originally destined for Xamarin Forms, but we wanted to let them grow more and, and, and evolve. So this is a cross-platform, fully cross-platform tab view mm. to replace the native tabs that you would appear at the bottom of, of you know, a shell app or a tab page controller. The cool thing is because it is completely cross-platform, it's fully templatable. You can mm. see here in the, in the XAML yeah. that uh, you've got control templates and you can oh, cool. have that first one be a big fab and it's at your big green button very cool um and so on the other side of the screen is the app bar um, and i say the other side of the screen that tab can actually go anywhere you can mm. put that that guy anywhere. in the middle of your ui mm. you can put Perfect. it underneath your header you can put it wherever oh cool. put it wherever you want it yeah um, you do you you do you <laughs> exactly um you can even do something crazy like this and have a big lottie animation or a gif in the background of your header um, yeah, so so a lot of those things will be coming as well. Keep an eye out for those. Uh, if, uh, you've seen any of Javier's work on templated UI. That's going to be really exciting. Um, but I have also one of my demos running over here Demo. that I wanted to walk through. Let's do it. So let me pull up the Android emulator. Okay, here we go. So I've got my Android emulator here, and I've got uh, my personal finance app. Ooh, nice. Um, this is a, a sample design I found on uh, one of the design websites, you know, that people will post their really cool designs. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if I could do that. Because look at these great gradients here, right? Beautiful gradients. Mm -hmm. And I'm throwing it in the background of a frame with corners and everything. Um, and then down here, we've got uh, a bunch of images and I'm, I'm, draw I'm drawing corner radiuses on those. Um, and then all this stuff also, I hadn't mentioned this yet, but let's talk about some dark mode, right? Ooh, You've pretty. got your dark mode and your light mode. Um, and that's super easy to control now inside of Xamarin Forms. It's literally uh, a couple of a couple of these right here, mm -hmm. app theme bindings. Here's my light and here's my dark. Nice. Um, and then in my code behind, let me jump over to the main page code. In my code behind, I'm just uh, checking the, the user theme. And in this particular case, I'm just toggling it. Yeah. Um, simple and straightforward. 
but uh, but it's as easy as that to keep track of it. And if you want to set it back to letting the operating system control your light and dark mode, you can go. Whoops! You can go back to the unspecified. And oh, when it goes cool. to unspecified, then uh, you're going to get whatever the OS is doing, right? Oh, cool. Um, all right, so let me feature a couple of other things in here in my code. So I mentioned the gradients. So here's one of my gradients, the blue one. Um, you see that what we do, I'll go ahead and close that. Um, you set a start and an end point. So, you know, it's zero to one, right? So mm -hmm. whatever you're going to fill, uh, those are your, your limits. Um, so in this particular case, I'm starting at the upper left corner, the zero, zero, and I'm uh, setting the gradient to go all the way to the one, one, which is the lower right corner. Got it. Um, and then I've got some colors here and I've got two stops. Uh, the first one being a dark blue, the next one being a light blue, and then really no offset. It's the zero and the one. Again, it's, those are your limits, right? And so then to apply that, I just take that gradient and I'll just go ahead and jump down here to my uh, card that I'm putting it on. So I've got a button that's using it, but I want to go down to the card, go to the next one. Here we go. go. So here's the frame for that, uh, that credit card example. And uh, instead of setting it to the background color, we have a new property here that can take brushes. Mm. And this property is background. So background color, I don't know, did we actually deprecate it? It's probably a good question. The show is deprecated. So it's probably still good to go. <laughs> but we expanded it. So you can just use the background. And then, of course, I just set my linear uh, gradient to it. Oh, very so cool. just like that, yeah. boom, I've got my colors. Oh, also right there, I want to highlight this new row definition syntax also uh, in there. Just look at that. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, it's nice and terse and super easy to use. Um, I love it. I've converted all of my code to that because uh, I like my XAML to be as short as possible. Yeah, it's super nice. <laughs> Makes it a whole lot easier to read too. Um, so let's talk about clipping real quick. So if I look at clip, I'm clipping a progress bar there, but what I actually want to show is this clipping down here. Hmm. Um, so all the, that row of images that I showed you at the bottom, I've got those here and, uh, I'm grabbing some images off the Xamarin assemble website, which is a great conference down in Latin America that we, I think both participated in. Were you part hmm. of that too? Yeah, yeah we did, did a panel there. Yeah. And, and I'm just setting the clipping to this photo rect. What's that? What is this um, photo, photo rect? rect? So I gotta get back up to it. Oops. Oh, look at this. So I'll here's my shape. So it's a rounded rectangle geometry. Actually, oh, the rounded yeah. rectangle geometry, fun fact, was not part of the first iteration of shapes and paths. Hmm. But the first thing I went and tried to do was to round all my corners. Because uh, <laughs> like gotcha. every design that you see has rounded corners. Yep. So went back to the team and said, hey, this is awesome. Love this. Need to round the corners. And so Javier was like, oh, yeah, no problem. No big deal. <laughs> and so he pumped out this new geometry for rounded rectangle. So, yeah, you give it a corner radius and then you give it a rect. Now, I think the next uh, the next improvement that I want to see is it's great to be able to give it a size. It's your X, Y width and height. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to be able to say, I don't know what my width is going to be. Yeah. Could you let me do that, please? Mm. You know, something like that. So we'll see if we can't get that all wired up. Uh Nobody told me I was uh, bananas. So, <laughs> so this that's my job as a PM, right? Is to go yeah. in and say, look, here's how I actually need to use this thing. Give, give me the power. I like it too, because even below what we can see in that image right there on 47 is you have an ellipse geometry. So you can really clip any shape, path. Exactly, any path. exactly. And so the, the, the main difference here, as you saw in the earlier slide, I was using line and I think I had an ellipse mm -hmm. there as well. When you're doing clipping, you're actually using the geometry variations. Gotcha. And uh, you can actually create a geometry group. So you can do something like this, create a geometry group. And now within that group, I could put an ellipse, oh. I could put a rectangle, I could put a whole bunch of stuff and compose whatever I needed to. And that will be treated as one geometry. Oh, that's cool. Um, so I did that actually originally. I used a rect and I used a bunch of circles, uh, uh -huh. ellipses, to do my rounded box. But oh, now cool. I've got a rounded rectangle geometry. I don't need to do that anymore. Beautiful. Um, yeah, so this is super cool. So this effectively is your circle image plugin. Very nice. Right? Yes, get rid of it forever. So, and, you know, some people have said, hey, well, why don't I just use a frame? You know, I can just wrap a frame around that and then I can set the corners of the frame. Yes, but now you've incurred another UI view. 
Mm, Whereas this is going to use graphics APIs and it's going to clip the single UI. So if you were to actually inspect the native tree, if you wrapped it in a frame, you would see a UI view on iOS and then you would see your UI image. Gotcha. Um, but if you use clipping, you're not going to get that extra, the view element. And so your performance will be better. Your memory will be better, et cetera, et cetera. Very nice. That's nice. Yeah. Cause that's what I used to do in the past was do all that. And now I don't have to. Exactly. One last thing, James, I want to highlight for you is fonts. So mm -hmm. fonts are a pain. Yep. And this is something that was introduced, not necessarily as a uh, experimental feature, but it's so cool. It deserves to be mentioned. So I've got a couple of uh, fonts in here. And I know it's a little tight to see, but uh, we've got a, a true type font and we've got an open type font. Um, and so really all you have to do is make sure that you're setting these to embedded resource. And then once they're in there as embedded resources, you can use a new assembly tag. Let's see here in my icon font. So in my icon font and really any C sharp, um, if you want to put this stuff all together in your assembly info CS, that's a good way to go. Um, but essentially you're going to use this export font attribute or property or whatever we call this guy. <laughs> and you're going to name the embedded resource and it just needs to match the name of the file but you can give it a really handy alias font awesome. Mm. And what this file is, is this is a generated uh, static class of all the glyphs that exist in font awesome so that I don't have to remember all of these funky codes, right? And then here's where the magic comes in. Whoops, not family, font awesome. Oh, here's my light bulb. Go ahead and I had to put all this stuff on one line. So let's go ahead and extract it back out so that we can see this a little bit easier. So I've got my font family here on the label. I just tell it font awesome. I didn't have to create like a, a style or anything. Um, I just call it font awesome. And then I have a static XAML uh, attribute here. And I go into my icon font and grab my light bulb. And this cool. is super convenient because I can just go in here and say, okay, well, I want it to be this. I want it to be that, whatever. Right? Yeah. You don't need to add a bunch of different images all over the place. Yeah. I didn't have to go into my native platforms and add fonts to every project. I didn't have to go figure out the info P list magic in iOS to wire that stuff up. I didn't have to figure out the differences between UWP and iOS and Android. Where should the file go? I just put it in one spot in my shared project. Now I've got my shared fonts and I can use it everywhere in my app. It's super awesome. Beautiful. Now this, all this whole thing, Sam reforms 5.0 preview today comes out eventually? Yep, it'll come out uh, mid to late October. You know, it, it really depends on what the feedback is and what kinds of uh, blocking issues we find. But so far, so good. Everything's looking really good. Um, I want to highlight, everybody should read the release notes. It is a major release, so there are some breaking changes to be aware of. Uh, one I'll mention off the top is UI Web View, which mm -hmm. has been deprecated, and Apple no longer will take apps, new apps into the App Store with it, yep. right? So WK Web View has been the default in Xamarin Forms for quite a while. But uh, if you have a plugin mm -hmm. or something else that references UI Web View, you get a rejection warning mm -hmm. from Apple. So yeah. to avoid that, we just yanked UI Web View out. Still Beautiful. in the source, you can go grab it from source, copy and paste it into your application, and you can continue on. Um, one other thing I'll mention is that we have changed the name from master detail page and related uh, properties to flyout page. Okay. Um, this is kind of in accordance with, um, you know, uh, kind of cleansing the names uh, to, to be more friendly uh, to everybody. And, and yeah. Makes a little bit more sense too. That's what it yeah. is. That's what you It get. does make uh, more sense yeah. because when when we originally introduced master detail page, it wasn't a common concept. Yeah. And there was no standard. And the way in which it was implemented really didn't match once everybody else kind of shipped theirs. So flyout page it does make more sense. Um, it's just a deprecation. So your existing apps will still continue to work. But okay. we uh, we encourage you to to go ahead and update your properties and your names and adopt the new ones. Beautiful. I'm already using shell, so I don't need to worry about it. So perfect. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. Shell people are on the happy path. Beautiful. All right. Awesome. Well, you can, of course, go to aka.ms slash XF5, and you'll see all the release notes. You'll see the blog post announcement, all the good stuff that you can get uh, all that information. And I'll, of course, link in the show notes below to David's awesome GitHub page. So, And the camera works. The camera's still going. It's happening. I got it's a fan blowing happening. on it. 
We're good to go, man. <laughs> it's all happening. Well, thanks everyone. Thanks David for showing off all these new features. I appreciate it. Thanks James. Cool. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell and let us know if you're enjoying Xamarin Forms 5.0 by leaving a comment in the show notes below. All right. Thanks everyone for watching. Peace. See ya.